Well, welcome back folks. Today we're going to begin the reassembly of the front wheel for the Lily Yamaha. We're going to begin with the drive gear pinion. It goes like that. Drive gear pinion mechanism. This will fit down inside of here. Something like that. And drives the speedometer. First thing I need to do, or I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the new seal. This is that seal that I had to track down the correct part number because Yamaha had the original listed incorrectly. And I'm going to press that seal into the little cup right there first. I'm going to begin by applying a little grease to the edge of the seal here. And then either I'll use my fingers to push it in, or if I have to, I'll use a socket. I think I can get it in my fingers, but we'll see. Okay, I've got a little grease applied to the edge of the seal itself. Now if I can't, see if I can't just get that started straight with my fingers. Like that. Got it started, but I don't think I'm going to be able to press it in all the way. This is just a 10 millimeter, or rather, I'm sorry, it's a 9 millimeter socket that is slightly smaller than the seal itself. There we go, I think we've got it seated. Next thing I'm going to do is put a little grease around the shore end of the shaft there. That's what goes down furthest into the wheel, like that, so something like that. I'll put a little grease here. I'll grease these, uh, uh, the gear mechanism where it's cut there. Put a little grease on this as well. I've got the drive gear all greased up. You can see the drive threads there have been greased. The end of the shaft where it fits into the body of the wheel hub has been greased. And I've applied anti-seize to the threads. Not likely I'll be removing this anytime soon, but in the event it doesn't have to be removed, that will make it a little bit easier. And of course the seal and everything is, a, is installed there. So now it's just a matter of get my hands off here a little bit, fitting this this mechanism down into the hub or up into the hub. You can see where it will fit there. I did a dry fit earlier. Well, well actually, it wasn't so dry. A little grease. I did a fit earlier just to make sure everything worked out okay, so you can see the little residual grease. So now what I'll do is I will simply insert that into the hole and you heard it drop in you can see it there I just pushed it with my finger to make sure it was down all the way now I'll simply use a pair of snap ring pliers those fingers at the end I'll engage with the slots in that uh, cup and snug it into place if I can do this so you can see what I'm doing. I've got my snap ring pliers set up so as I squeeze them they open and as I push them apart they close. So I'll just put that down in there like that. I squeeze it just so till it touches the wall of the or the body of the plate and then I just Tighten it into place like that. I'm trying to shoot this so you can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm keeping gentle pressure on the handles of the right there. Nice and just snug it in. You don't have to over tighten it and you can see 
right there. It's far easier to grease that gear while it's out of the hub than in the hub, as you can tell here. Now I'll just turn my finger, make sure everything turns okay. And it does. So we've got the gear mechanism installed. The next thing we need to install is this little O-ring. This is a brand new part, still serviced by Yamaha. And this O-ring goes right down in there and sits right against the top of that uh, threaded nut or cup. And just acts as a seal so that when you put the speedometer cable in, it cushions against this O-ring like a seal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this just to touch uh, so that to hold it in place to locate so it doesn't come out during uh, handling of this component over the coming uh, final assembly of the brake shoes. And uh, that will keep it intact just make sure it doesn't come out. There you see I've got just a little bit of grease only on one side. That would be the bottom side. Just a matter now of fitting this in and pushing it down all the way. Making sure it's in. Like that. Again, the grease will just act as a sort of type of adhesive. You can use clear silicone grease as well. It doesn't make any difference. I just use the same grease I used to grease the gear drive right there. So the gear drive, or the speedometer drive rather, is now done. Now we're going to move on to installing uh, the brake shoes. And before we get into the actual installation, I'd like to talk about brake shoes a little bit. This is one of the original front brake shoes that came out of this machine, came off of this plate. And as you can see there from the logo, that's, that's a Yamaha part. I don't know if these are original to the bike or not, I have no idea, but one thing that struck me about this is how much of the brake shoe itself, that is this band here on the outside of the aluminum, is left. There's quite a bit more left on this shoe than there is on the rear brake shoes, which are identical by the way. They're the same shoes on the front and the back of the, of the machine. And that's probably because the rear brake is usually used more. But I'm struck by how, uh, how much material is left, the brake lining. I might be able to reuse these. Now, what you have to be careful of if you're going to reuse them is you have enough material left here to make it worth your while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the thickness of that brake shoe and compare it to a new shoe and see how much difference there is. Speaking of new shoes, Believe it or not, I have, as you can see here, brake shoes from various other projects that I've acquired over the years. I'm not really sure how this happened. It does, though, if you've ever done much uh, work on old bikes, you end up accumulating parts. These are identical shoes, by the way. This one is a Suzuki Supply part number. That's a Suzuki number right there. This is aftermarket here. They're identical shoes. They're probably made by the same people and in fact I don't know if you can see that on there or the reflection but I had written a number of years ago the Kawasaki part number right here and then the Suzuki part number right here. So these are these shoes are used on multiple small motorcycles. The identical shoe again probably made by the same people in Japan and you can see on the back it lists some of the various bikes that this is the shoes are used for. In addition to these, I know it fits on Kawasaki's. Now what's interesting about these shoes, let me take one out of the box here. These are brand new. These have never been used. They're identical shoes in, in all respects. That is, dimensionally, they're virtually identical. The only difference is thickness. I don't know if you can see that right there. The shoe on the right is, a, is wider this way 
than the original shoe. Other than that, I think these shoes, let me get them so that they're oriented, there we go, they're oriented the same. Otherwise, these shoes are identical. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this shoe, this brake lining, and compare it to this one. I might also look in the book, see if they have a service limit. But you can see those are very, very, very close. I'm pretty confident I can get by with scuffing this brake lining up, cleaning the shoes up, both, up, both of them, of course and reinstalling them. But in the event that doesn't work, I discover that this uh, lining is beyond the service limit. I could probably use this shoe or these shoes by putting it in, putting them in a lathe, or rather I should say putting them in my mill, measuring off from the center line and taking off the extra material there. I think that work fine in the, in the uh, mill. The mill will take that down with no problem at all. Probably be a 15 minute task and basically remanufacture this shoe in the, in the width dimension the same as this one to work. But before I do that, before I uh, make that effort, I'm going to check. I'm going to measure this, check to see if there's a service limit. If I think I can reuse them, I probably will and uh, we'll go ahead and get on with the installation. The only other comment at this point I'd like to make is these parts which came out of this hub. This is, these are the grease fittings by the way. There's two of them. One for, or rather there's two of them for this hub here and here. These are all original parts. I just cleaned them up. I soaked them in evapo rust first for uh, I think two days or so and then I hit them on my brass wire wheel and cleaned them up and they cleaned up um, very nicely. Even the springs are the original springs. They're in very good shape. If this was to be a rider again, a serious rider, I would probably replace the brake springs but there's no damage to them. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not even rusty to speak of. Not anymore anyway. So I'll reuse all of these parts when I put the uh, put the brakes back together. Next step, let's check this uh, thickness of the brake lining, and uh, if I think it's usable, I'll go ahead and clean up the shoes, preparing to mount them to the backing plate. Here are the uh, original brake shoes, all cleaned up. I did scuff them with 120 grit sandpaper and then uh, clean them up uh, really well with brake cleaner. One thing to be careful of when you handle old, particularly older uh, brake shoes, is I don't know when the cutoff was and when they stopped using asbestos in brake shoes. Um, these probably don't have asbestos, but I don't know for sure. So when you scuff brake shoes, what I do is I wear a mask and uh, rubber gloves because it creates a little dust. And then when I clean them off with brake cleaner, I do the same thing. And then I wash my hands thoroughly when I'm done handling them, like here. Um, just as a precaution, asbestos is nothing to, uh, to mess around with. In terms of the uh, brake shoe thickness itself, I did measure these, and these measure at about 3.46 millimeters at their thickest. That's an average of their thickest, uh, or thinnest rather, I should say, Point, which is right here in the middle. So 3.46 is the average and I measured this new brake shoe and that came in at 3.50 so they're very very close in terms of the th overall thickness. So I'm going to reuse these brake shoes. One other thing that I noticed that was a little bit unique, I've never seen this before, you see that, um, see that little ridge right here in that brake shoe? That's where it goes around the pivot point here, and you can see this has been relieved so that that traps the brake shoe. You can see there, so it can't move this way laterally. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's a nice touch. Uh, these brake shoes don't have that, 
you can see here, but I don't think it would matter anyway uh, for what I'm doing. So that, that wouldn't prevent me from machining uh, those other brake shoes uh, in, into a narrower fashion if I need to, which I probably will have to do for the rear uh, brake shoes. I haven't gotten that far yet. So we're going to go ahead and reuse these. They've been, they've been scuffed, they've been cleaned, and now they're ready to go. And uh, we'll go ahead now and assemble the brake shoes together. And I'm going to put a little, a little grease around here so that where it goes through, it has a little lubrication. I've got the, uh, the brake cam spindle greased up. Put that in like that. Now I'm going to wipe off any excess. The reason I wipe off the excess is I don't want it, um, for some odd reason, migrating to the brake shoes. There we go. One other thing that's a little unique on this arrangement is quite often, uh, at least on later um, model years, of, of the various Japanese bikes, they'll put a dust seal back here that will seal this uh, dust and, and uh, contamination seal. This bike doesn't have one, which means these brake, uh, brakes aren't very water or weather tight. It's usually a little felt pad or an O-ring that fits in here somewhere. This did not have one when I took it apart and I looked at the parts diagrams and one was not indicated so they didn't apparently use it. Now that we have the brake uh, cam installed, it's time to install the brake uh, shoes and springs. I usually will install the springs to the shoes off of the backing plate. In other words, I won't put this in place here and then attempt to stretch a spring across. That just, that just doesn't work. Instead, what I will do is simply take these springs and uh, get this in focus for you here, and I will um, install the springs and the shoes in this position, and then I will install it as a unit over the pivot and the brake cam. I thought I'd go ahead and just show you quickly how I install springs. I won't show you all four of them, but I'll just give you an example. You can see the open hook here, and I usually, this can sometimes be a little bit of a struggle, I will slip it over like that, and then twist it into the hole. Okay? These, the second one, and sometimes it be a little bit of a challenge here because you've got to wrestle with the other shoe at the same time. Again, notice my hands are clean. No grease, no oil, no dirt. I'm going to do the same thing here. Flip it over and latch it like that. And I'll do the same thing on this last one. Okay, I got all four springs hooked. As you can see there, and now what I'm going to do is I am simply going to twist these like this, that's really going to be their position. So the last step will be to get the shoes over the pivot and the brake cam. In order to do that, I'm going to take it apart. You can see me, I think, force that over like that. So I've got the pivot on the bottom on. I've got one of the shoes here bearing. Then I, then I rotate this one, this top one here, around and snap it down. There we go. And again, it'll sit like this. This is where the fork comes down. So this will twist away from me. And in the process, 
it'll activate and pull those shoes apart. So now we've got the brake shoes installed. They're down over that relief. You can see right there. I'm going to take a clean uh, sh shop towel or paper towel with a little brake cleaner and just clean these off to make sure I didn't get any contamination on the brake shoes. And then we'll move on to installing the two grease nipples here and here. And I'll go ahead and put this, uh, this is the attaching bolt for the um, front brake activating cable. A little anti-seize to each of the threaded portion, the male portion of the, of the grease fittings or the grease nipples. Those are an eight millimeter fitting size. So I'm just going to snug these up. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in quite a ways because I don't want it extended out, out beyond this rim. And I can adjust of course, and we'll need to adjust it later when I uh, install the uh, front brake cable. The other thing I like to do, if at all possible, come on, here we go, is install as many parts as I can as I go, so that number one, I don't misplace them, and can't find them weeks or months later when I'm doing final assembly, there. Uh, unless it's something I'll have to take apart later to complete during a later uh, assembly step. In this case, that won't, that won't uh, be relevant for this item. Now, the way this goes together, of course, and it won't be a permanent assembly right now, I'm just going to put it together to show you how this meshes. This is the hub itself. This is the brake backing plate. And they simply fit together like this, and you might have to twist it a little bit to get it to fit like that. And if you look down in here, look at that uh, drive, as I, as I turn that hub, you will be able to see the spindle in there move. Let me um, take a marker and I'll put a black mark on there, and then you'll be able to see it easier. I think if I can get it to mark. So watch that spindle as I turn it, turn the hub. So I know that the drive is working the way it's designed to. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Get the front hub uh, basically back together. We'll move on to the rear hub now and do the final assembly, that being the bearings and brake shoes and the same kind of thing. And then after that, will be lacing of the wheels. That's it for today. As usual, thanks for watching.